Hello and welcome to another episode of Nonstop F-Stop. Today we're going to be adding another piece of equipment to the Lake Cobra Photography equipment family. And it is the BE-126 Oban Ball Head. This part of the review will be the first thoughts and then I'm gonna go out into the field and test it and I'm gonna tell you what I think how it actually did. <clears throat> I know it's what it's rated for. It's rated for 26 pounds on the head and a not tip at all. So, you know, we're gonna test that out. They say it weighs about a pound, but man, I don't know why, but it feels a lot heavier than a, just a pound. Um, it's about 3.9 inches tall. All the dimensions are on the actual outside of the box and the capacities and load and all that. So, let's see what it looks like with the packaging. They seem to have done a really great job of the packaging. They give you a uh, 3 8 to quarter inch uh, adapter for the bottom. And the Allen wrench, I assume to put it in, I'm not sure. They always give you tools that you don't really need or that you're gonna lose. All right, this thing feels herky. Okay, nice build. Metal, me like, I like this. This is very nice, there's no, I don't feel any plastic except for, nope, man, that, that's plastic. But only the interlay, only the level interlay was, so what, who cares? Okay, so it has two levels. My first thoughts is, heck yeah, but of course, uh, it better be, heck yeah, for $110 or so, you're gonna find it for the 110, 120 range. You know, you could buy it for more and you're gonna find the deals somewhere else, but uh, you're right around the $100 range for this ball head. Okay, so it's got dials right here. This is for uh, the actual spin when you mount it to the tripod. You, you spin the whole head without spinning the tripod and then you can lock it down. And you can increment this, loosen it all the way, and it becomes very easy to roll the ball head. If you tighten this sucker down a couple of turns, it's not moving anywhere. I mean, and you can crank on it more and it actually not move. But um, I'm sure that the more you crank down, the looser everything's gonna get and the tighter you're gonna have to get it over time to keep that same tension. So I wouldn't go cranking it down more than you need to do it as you need to do it. And so that's the, the ball head um, tensioner. So you can lay this thing over and roll it and actually have a uh, level right here to tell you, oh, okay, that's all level, nice. And you can shoot level like that. Uh, 90 degrees, portrait mode. Okay, now you have the quick release plate in which this actually controls that and you just pull it out. Uh, you can't actually, if you push it down, these two bolts actually stop it. So you can't actually push it left or right or forward or backwards. You actually have to pick it straight up, um, which I, I think is a pretty decent um, feature where when you loosen it, you, you can't actually, when you loosen it just a little bit, you can't actually pull it straight up and it won't slide out either way. So that I like. So first thoughts are definitely worth the money if you're going to um, need a 26 pound ball head, which I'm going to be putting my 5D Mark III's and a 70 to 200 lens on it and, you know, sliders and all kinds of stuff. So I definitely want that um, extra capacity. I didn't want to get straight to that limit, like 13 pounds or 16 pounds or something like that, and then be pushing it right to the limit. So let's get out to the field and test this bad boy and see how it handles, I don't know, being a, having a load put on it. All right, so welcome to the field review portion of this Oban BE-126 ball head. I've been using this thing for the last two weeks or so, and I kind of like it. I'm just gonna say that straight out, that this thing is a really great product. I'm not gonna bash it. Whatever I say bad about it, eh, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Just because I have a little issues with it doesn't mean you're not gonna like it. This is my opinion. I'm gonna give this thing a build quality of a 10. This thing is phenomenally built. But on the other hand, I'm gonna give it a design quality of a four-ish, maybe a five. Um, my real hatred, I guess, for the few things is the fact that they have a round knob right here is preposterous to me. Why would they put a round knob where you're actually supposed to crank down and 
have your camera sitting on top of this thing, up to 26 pounds, and they give you this little round, you know, eat knob. And to me, that doesn't make sense. They should have a T-handle here. The other portion of um, this thing that I don't like is the fact that you have to use an Allen wrench, they, they provide it, to put the plate on. That doesn't make any sense to me. If you're out in a field, you're not gonna keep up with an Allen wrench. And there's no place to store the Allen wrench on the head. At least make it flat head so you could stick a quarter or a dime or a key head or something in there to tighten it down. What would be really great though, is if they took Giotos, Giotos, I don't know how you say it, in having this little built-in turning handle on their screw. See, that would be really, really great because you don't have to have a key or a quarter or something to stick in there or an Allen wrench. That would be the perfect solution for that. All right, so once you actually get the plate mounted to your camera with this Allen wrench, oh, mounting it to this, it's a breeze. You just loosen the receiver, put this straight down on it because the two little screws actually keep it from going forwards or backwards. And then tighten her down. And as long as everything else is tight, this thing's solid. So moving on to the functionality of it. If you loosen this thing all the way, it's gonna be one floppy sucker. Like no support, obviously. But as you tighten it down, a little bit at a time, it starts getting a little bit of friction. And you have that, that play, you know, doesn't fall, but doesn't fall, but you can kind of push it. And so you can set your shot, go ah, like it right there. Crank her down, thing's not moving. You can actually put this thing in almost any direction, any position you really could ever want. You can lay it down, say you have a portrait shot, and obviously it doesn't lay perfectly down the way that it's mounted like that, but it does if you lay it like that. So you get a nice portrait angle like this, so you just have to spin it around if you want to shoot that way. Like this. And also, there is a level here and a level under here, which if you mount your camera straight down on it, you're not gonna see the level. So they give you a level here that you actually can use. Now we're shooting perfectly level portrait shots according to that bubble. All right, so getting this thing into an odd shooting position really is pretty simple. Choose almost any position that you want Go. Okay, we want to take a long exposure or multiple exposures on this one. So we're gonna lock this thing down. All right, so she's set. Say we want to get a little closer or change the angle. All right. Now, we're ready. We just shoot. This thing can quickly roll up sure does make life a lot easier when you're shooting a lot of different angles and you need something that moves very smoothly in a lot of directions and you have to get into some very interesting positions with the camera. Uh, this thing makes it so much easier. All right, so say you needed to get into an odd position like over a countertop or something like that and you have one of these tripods that'll actually lay the neck over you can actually extend it over the counter and put this head in a position for landscape, I mean for portrait or landscape. And if it's not level, you have to spin this thing around like that. Get your shot. Yeah, I like that, it's nice. Lock it down, take your multiple exposures, click, 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 and you're off to your next shoot. You don't have to worry about, oh, how am I gonna get a leg over this, uh, over this countertop and lay down there or fit a gorilla pod there or something like that. You can just walk up, set this head, 
bam, you're done. So in this instance, we're shooting at a low angle because we want to see the rug and the fireplace and possibly even the balcony up there. And so with this ball head, you don't have to push the tripod around all over the floor. And if you're in a small space, you're not gonna have the ability to push a tripod this size all over the floor to get your angles that you want. Because with the typical tripod head, you might have the motion this direction, but you will not be able to tilt the camera this way or spin the camera this way. You just don't have the range of motion that a ball head does. Well, obviously you can get any ball head and it will give you a range of motion similar to this thing. But this thing has the, the smooth transition that you would want uh, to keep your camera safe and also if you're doing video and so on. Say we want to shoot uh, a landscape of this, this uh, fireplace. Then, you know, you click, you take a picture, you're done. Well, say we want a portrait, you just turn this thing around. Now, it gives you a portrait shot. Well, say you could do all that with a typical, you know, a fluid head, but here's where you can't do this with a typical tripod head. You want to point up and over to get a 45 degree of this uh, fireplace and the balcony to see the perspective. Then all you have to do is just tilt it up and then tilt it over, lock her down. Voila. Very simple set motions, everything's done. All right, so another great feature of this oven ball head is that it gives you increment markers of every five degrees all the way around 360 degrees. So if you wanted to do a panorama shot of, you know, say you wanted to open, show this open area and you didn't want a wide bubble lens look, you can have this the flat stitched image look and you can do it straight with this without having to pull out a panorama head just to get a simple little shot like this. So you just go, all right, we're gonna pull this thing around to, Say, say zero degrees. I'm actually at 30, but for discussion's sake, we're gonna say I'm at zero. Click. We're gonna go, okay, that's decent. I don't want too much distortion, so I'm gonna go 30 degrees because of how wide my lens is. That gives me a decent amount of over overlap, so 30 degrees. Okay, we're moving on. Another 30 degrees. Another 30 degrees, another 30 degrees. Probably not gonna use this much of the image because it'll start looking weird once you get past the 180 degree mark. If you shoot past the 180 degree mark, it really starts confusing people when you show them that picture. This thing will allow you to do simple panorama shots. Obviously, you do not wanna use this for a 360 degree spin and try to make a full sphere panorama out of it just because its uh, center point is, is off and you get some very odd stitching issues. All right, so as a final recap, review, and personal rating of this open ball head, is it worth $120? Heck yeah, because what you get for $120 is well worth the, stabi the stability and usability of this ball head. But what you get, it's a really great price because you can mount 26 pounds in this thing. This thing is really smooth, it's not chunky. It's, it's very well built. So, go on Amazon, eBay, Oban.com, wherever you can find this thing and buy one because if you're supporting something like a 5D Mark III, it's well spent money, it's well worth it. But if you're trying to support something like a T2i or a point and shoot, you don't need a ball head of this caliber to, to support something as light. So, depends on what you're doing with it, if it's worth it. But, for me, it is. <laughs> All right, so that's it for this episode of Non-Step F-Stop. Remember to like and subscribe for more reviews, tips, and tricks. And stay tuned, because you never know what we're gonna do next.